Good day guys. Welcome back to another amazing session of Wiki Science Tutors. And I really want to use this medium to appreciate you guys for your utmost support throughout this period so far. Because sharing the video with your subscription are really really so grateful. And if you are new to this channel, you see below there the like button, you also see the comment box. Please ensure you comment whenever you have something to say about the video or you actually enjoy the video. Please do not hesitate to actually click on like button. You can as well share these videos with your friend and as well be impactful to students that are in their secondary school level. So guys, once again, I say I'm grateful to you all. In this video, we'll be talking about the arrangement of resistors in an electric circuit. And um, we'll look at it so briefly and um, so concise, just like we used to do. Okay, let's get started, guys. Before we talk about the arrangement of resistors, either in series or in parallel, you need to know what resistors are, isn't it? Now, what is a resistor? A resistor is actually a device that is used in an electric circuit to offer opposition to the flow of electric current. That is what resistor does. And um, the degree of offering this opposition to um, electric current in an electric circuit is quantified using what we refer to as the resistance of that resistor. So the resistance of a resistor measures the degree at which a resistor will be able to offer opposition to the flow of electric current. Now, basically, there are two types of resistors. We have what we refer to as the um, standard resistors and we have what we refer to as the variable resistors. What's the difference between these two? The standard resistors, they always have a fixed magnitude. Like for instance, now you can have a resistance box showing that you have 2 ohm resistor, you have 3 ohm, you have 5 ohm, you have 7 ohm, you have 15 ohm, you have 10 ohm, you have 12 ohms, you have 30 ohms, like that. It is fixed in this particular resistor. But when it comes to the case of variable resistor, Variable resistor will always have a changing resistance value. So, the magnitude of the resistance value is not fixed. An example of a variable resistor is a real start. And in this case, the resistance value of that real start can actually be changed. This is exactly what differentiates a standard resistor from a variable resistor. Now, let's talk about the arrangement of resistors in an electric circuit. There are two important ways in which Resistors can be arranged in an electric circuit and they are arranged for two different purposes. Now, the first one is that you can arrange either in series as shown on the board here or you probably arrange in parallel as shown on the other side here. Now, I said that this arrangement is basically meant for two different purposes. The first one here is that when you arrange in series, when you arrange in series, the purpose of you arranging in series is to increase the resistance value of these resistors. So in this case now, the equivalent resistance of the resistors is increased, is increased compared to the individual resistance, to the individual resistance of the resistor. Now one thing you observe here is that if we should make this equivalent resistance of the resistor to be R, you observe that the value of this R will be greater than your R1, it will be greater than your R2, and as well will be greater than your R3. But when it comes to the case of arrangement of resistors in parallel, if it is in parallel and not in series, what happens here is that the equivalent resistance of the resistor is decreased compared to the individual resistance of the resistor. So it's just the opposite of this particular arrangement in series. So we say that the equivalent resistance, resistance is decreased compared to the individual resistance of the resistors. Secondly, secondly, you observe that 
In order to quantify the equivalent resistance now, you can use the expression that R is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 because I said it's increased. Now, you can have as many as possible resistors in this arrangement. So we can use a continuous sign that this can be continuous to whatsoever number of resistors you have in the circuit. Now, the last resistor will be taking a resistance value of Rn. That's for this expression. But when it comes to the case of when it comes to the case of um, arrangement in parallel, we instead say that your equivalent resistance will be taken as 1 over R. And that is given as 1 over the resistance value of the individual resistors that you have in the arrangement. So we say 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. You can as well have as many as possible resistors in this arrangement and you just use a continuous sign that it can work continue to the last resistance value of the resistors you have in the circuit. So we use this expression. Now, I believe that you are seeing the purpose which you are using this and this now. So it therefore means that if you should say, for instance, that the resistance value here is 2, that is 2 ohms, the resistance value here is 3 ohms, and the resistance value here is 7 ohms. It therefore means that to get the equivalent resistance here, look at this now. You say that your equivalent resistance will be 2 plus 3 plus 7. And 2 plus 3 will give us 5 plus 7. That will give us 12. So you have 12 ohms. Now what we are saying is that this 12 ohm is greater than 2. The 12 ohm here is greater than 3. And the 12 ohm here is greater than 7. Now let's take this particular resistors and arrange them in parallel. And see the difference now. In this case now, you can have it to be 2 ohms. You have 3 ohms. And you also have um, 7 ohms. For this one now, you actually have that 1 over R is equal to 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 7. And here, what do you have? You have the LCM. The LCM of 2, 3, and 7. Just simply say that 6 times 7. That is 6 times 7 is 42. Now, 2 in 42 will give us 21. Plus 3 in 42 will give us 14. And um, 7 in 42 will as well give us 6. So in this process now, we can add everything together here. I have it to be 41 over 42. Now in this process now, you have it that 1 over R is equal to 41 over 42. So here, what do you have? You have that your R is equal to 42 over 41. What have I done here? I've brought this one here down and take the R up. So you have R up one down. And whatever I've done here, I'm going to do it on the other side. That is, I'm reciprocating both sides. So here you have it to be 42 up and 41 down. So you have it to be 42 over 41. So what is 42 over 41? You realize that this will give us what? 1.02 ohms. Now, when you look at this now, the resistance value, which is the equivalent resistance altogether here, you have it to be 1.02. Compared to this one, you realize that 1.02 is less than this two. 1.02 is less than this 3. 1.02 is less than 7. So that is the reason we have the word here, decreased. And here, on the contrary, you have it to be what? Increased because it is now what? Greater. Now, what is the equivalent resistance? That's, that is what you need to understand as well too. That you have a piece of broom. You can easily break this. But when you now have a collection of pieces of broom together to form a bunch of broom, Realize that you find it difficult to break. Now, in this case, now it's offer higher resistance value. So, in that case, now we say the arrangement is in series. But let's now assume that you are now uh, you, you make the piece of broom now to become lighter. When you make it to become lighter, you know if you can easily break it. In that case, now you say your arrangement is in parallel. Okay, that's about this arrangement. Now let's come back to our keynotes. So I'll just erase this. I will erase this. And as well, erase this aspect. The next thing is that the current across each resistor, the current across each resistor is the same, even compared with the resistor produced by the source voltage. The current across each resistor is the same. as the current produced by 
source voltage. So this means that if the current produced by source voltage is high, then it definitely means that the current in this first resistor will also be high, the current produced in this second resistor will also be high, and the current produced in this third resistor will also be high. But this is not the same as in case of potential difference. Now let's see. In case of the potential difference now, we say the potential difference across each resistor is different is different from the potential difference of the source voltage it's different from the potential difference of the source voltage so it means that if the potential difference of the source voltage is v if it is v it will be different from this potential difference across the first resistor across the second resistor and across the third resistor since this is represented with, as the first resistor, which is R1, or as they say V1 for the first resistor. For the second resistor, I'll say V2. And for the third resistor, I'll say V3. Now, this is about the arrangement of resistors in um, series. However, when you look at it carefully, you now realize that by the time you sum together the potential difference across each resistor, you will as well get the potential difference of the source voltage. So here we say our V, which is the potential difference of the source voltage, is equal to the potential difference across the first resistor, potential difference across the second resistor, and potential difference across the third resistor. Now let's go back to the case of arrangement of resistors in parallel. We look at what we've done here, we take the opposite of it on the other side here. When it comes to the case of current in um, resistors arranged in parallel, the current is absolutely different from the current produced by the source voltage. So it means that the current here will be different. So I can just say this one is my I1. This is different. This is my I2 and this is my I3. So the current here is different. The current across each resistor is different from the current produced by source voltage. So this current is different from the current produced by the source voltage. So if this current is I1, this one is I2, this one is I3, the value of the current across each resistor is different from this I that you have here. However, you will always have that the sum of the current across each of these resistors will give you this current produced by the source voltage. So we say that our high is equal to I1 plus your I2 plus your I3. Then the last one is that the potential difference across each of the resistor is the same as the potential difference produced by the what? Source voltage. So potential difference across each resistor is the same. Across each resistor is the same. So I can say that the potential difference here, if it is V produced by source voltage, it will be the same as the V here. So it will be produced, it will be the same as the V here, and it will be the same as the V here. So there's no need for me indicating V1, V2, V3. Now, all of these key terms which I've highlighted here must be resonating in your mind whenever you want to solve questions related to arrangement of resistors, either in series or in parallel, that are connected in an electric circuit. So please. Um, we, while you stay tuned, we'll actually bring up two questions here differently, which we're going to solve one on series and the other on arrangement of resistors in parallel. Now, let's take a look at this question. The question states that three resistors of resistance 2 ohms, 3 ohms, and 5 ohms are arranged in series and connected to a 240 volt source. Show the arrangement with a diagram. That's the first question. Secondly, calculate the equivalent resistance of the resistors, the current across each resistor, and the potential difference across each resistor. So firstly, let's take the diagram. Since they said that the arrangement is in series, and we use a box to denote 
a standard resistor in an electric circuit. So I'll quickly draw the box out. And since we have three resistors, we are going to draw three boxes. And um, we can have something like this. So now, since they are connected end to end, as in case of series, we have this, we have this, we have this, and we as well have this. The first one is said to be 2 ohm. The second one is said to be 3 ohm. The third one is said to be 5 ohm. So now we can connect it now to a 240 volt source. I said in question that we have a 240 volt source. One will be longer than the other when you are dealing with a cell in an electric circuit. When you are dealing with a source, a source voltage in an electric circuit. So here we have to be 240 volts. Now this is the arrangement so far. And um, we are done with it. Now the question now is that we have to calculate the equivalent resistance of the resistor. I will say that we can quantify that by saying that our equivalent resistance is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. I'll stop on R3 because I have three resistors basically. So here, I have my R1 to be 2, I have my R2 to be 3, and I have my R3 to be 5. So here, 2 plus 3 plus 5 will give us 10. So we have it to be 10 ohms. So it means that the equivalent resistance of the resistors that I have here is 10. Compared with the values here, 10 is greater than 2, 10 is greater than 3, 10 is greater than 5. So it means that the purpose of arranging in series is attained. And this is to increase the resistance of the resistors. Now, another thing they ask us to calculate is the current across each. Now, very good. You must be careful here because those key notes is very much essential to use here. If this is used to represent the current across the across the source voltage. Don't forget, the current here will also be the same or true for arrangement in series. So if this is I, this is I, this is I, this is I. So here, the I that is produced by source voltage is the same as the current that flows across each of the resistor. Now we can simply use Ohm's law. True Ohm's law will state that your V is equal to IR. Since you are dealing with the source voltage, which is what? 240 is equal to what we have, the I, which we are looking for, as the current across each of the resistors. But now, the resistors are arranged together and they are behaving as a single resistor, which with a resistance value of 10. Not to not to not 5, with a resistance value of 10. So I'll say times 10. In this case, now we divide by 10, we divide by 10. And we can cancel this, cancel this. We say that 0 cancel 0. Our I is equal to 24 ampere. So the current that is produced here is equal to 24 ampere. And this current is the same thing as what flows in every of the resistors that is arranged in the series. That is arranged in series. Now the second one is that we have to calculate the um, potential difference across each of the resistors. As I said earlier, for arrangement in series, the potential difference is usually different. So here now, the potential difference here can be taken as V1. Let me use a different marker. V1, the potential difference here will be V2 and the potential difference here will be V3. So the potential difference across each is different. We still relate it with Ohm's law. Why? Because here we now have the voltage, we have current, and we also have the resistance. So we can relate it with Ohm's law. If I want to relate the expression here with Ohm's law, I will say that my V1, according to what I have here, is equal to what do I have here? Current, which is I, times my what? Current times my what? R. But this R now is the first resistor, so I'll say R1. So here, what do you get? To get the potential difference across, v, across the first resistor, we say our potential difference is equal to 24 times the resistance value here, which is 2. So here, 24 times 2 will give us what? 48. So we have 48 volts flowing across the first resistor. That is developed across the first resistor. For the second one, you realize that we can still relate this expression here as well with Ohm's law by stating that our V2 is equal to our I and our R2, which is this 3. So I'll say V2 is equal to I of R2. So here now we have it to be V2 is equal to high, high, which is high is said to be 24, 
times how how is said to be three. So twenty four times three will give us um seventy two votes. So our V three V so our V two is equal to seventy two votes. Now for the next one, which will have to be the third one, we have that V three is equal to what? That is our I and the last resistor, which is the third one. So we have to be V3 equals our high is set to be 24 times the last resistor, which is 5. So 24 times 5 will give us 24 times 5 will give us 120 votes. That will give us 120 votes. Now remember what we said earlier about the arrangement of resistors in series that the total potential difference generated across each of the resistors is the same thing as the potential difference across the source voltage. Now let's see if that is true. Let's see. I'll write it with a different marker. So we see that V is equal to what? What do you have as V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V3? And what do you have? The V1 is said to be 48. V2 is said to be 72. And um, V3 is said to be 120. By the time we add all of this together, we have to be... This is actually one... Um, this is 120 now. This is 120 plus 120. I have to be 240 volts. Now you see that what you have here is as well 240 volts. So it was this 240 volts that was divided into each of these resistors into three places. So that's how we've gotten our 240 volts back. So in this case now, this is all about the arrangement of resistor, uh, arrangement of resistors in series. Now let's take another question that will be on arrangement of resistors in parallel. We see what is different here. So now let's take the second question as well. The resistors of resistance 3 ohms, 5 ohms, and 10 ohms are arranged in parallel and connected to a 240 volt source. Show this with, um, show this arrangement with the with the diagram. Okay. Now since it's arranged in parallel, so I'll quickly put three resistors one over another, and um in this case now it's not connected end to end. Instead, one node is connected. Um, instead, all the nodes are connected to a point. All the nodes are connected to a point. All the nodes are connected to a point. So I'll just do something like this. So all the nodes are connected here. The same thing with this. And um, this. So all the nodes are connected here. So we then extend this further to... Uh, we then connect all of this to... A source voltage where you have one length longer than the other. Now the source voltage they said is 240, right? So we put our 240 volts here. Here they said the first one is 3 ohms, the second one is said to be 5 ohms, and the next one is said to be 10 ohms. Now let's see. <clears throat> According to the next question, they say we should calculate the equivalent resistance of the resistor. So the equivalent resistance here now will be. 1 over R instead of R1 plus R2 plus R3. In this case, now to take a reciprocal, so we have 1 over R equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. You should take reciprocal version. So here you have it to be your R1 is said to be 3, your R2 is said to be 5, and your R3 is said to be 10. So what's the LCM of 3, 5, and 10? The LCM of 3, 5, and 10 is said to be 30, right? Then you have that 3 in 30 is 10 plus 5 in 30 is said to be 6 plus 10 in 30 is said to be 3. So when you add all of this together, you have to be um, 19 over 30. So we say that therefore that our 1 over R is equal to 19 over 30. So do you know what we do here? We have to reciprocate. Reciprocate here and reciprocate here. When we come down, R will go up. We say R equals 30 will go up and um. The 19 will come down, you have to be 30 over 19. And what do you have? You have to be 1.58 ohms. So that is your equivalent resistance of the resistor. Now, as I said earlier, you realize that the equivalent resistance of the resistor here is less compared to the resistance here, which is 3, is lesser than 5, is as well lesser than 10. So the purpose of arranging in parallel is attained. Is that thing? Now let's look at the next question. The next question says that we should calculate the current across each resistor. Very good. Now I said earlier that the current produced by the source, we put it here, right? 
This current is not the same as the current that flow across each of the resistors here. Yeah. So to denote the current across each of the resistors, I'll simply state that this one will be I1, this one will be I2, and this one will be I3, because it's not the same. However, the voltage potential difference across each of the resistor will be the same. So the voltage here will be V, which is this 240. Will also be V here, will also be V here. Don't forget, to, for, this V is said to be 240 volt. The V here is supposed to be 240 volt, and the V here is also 240 volt. So it will be the same. So now we can relate this expression here with Ohm's law. In what sense? That we have your V, you have your I, and you have your R. So to relate it with Ohm's law, I'll say that my V is equal to, sorry, let me take the other marker. We have that our V is equal to I, R. But here now it will be I1, so you don't get it wrong here. I1 and your R, so I have to be I1. So what's your V? V is said to be 240 equals I1 is unknown and our R is 3. So divide by 3, divide by 3. This will cancel this. My I1 is said to be 3 in um, 24 is 8. So I have to be 80 ampere. So it means that it is 80 ampere of current that is flowing across this particular one. Okay. Let's take for the other one. For this next one now, we also have our V, we have our R, and we have our I. So I'll say my V is equal to, what do I have here? I2 instead. I2. And I'll have my R2 here. So what is my V? V is also 240 here. So 240 is equal to my I2 is unknown. That's what I'm looking for. Times, times your R2, which is said to be 5. 5. So divided by 5, divided by 5. This will cancel this. Then the current across the second resistor is said to be 5 in um, 20 is 4. And 5 in 40 is 8. So we have 48 ampere here. For the next one, we can as well relate it to its own slope by stating that we have V is equal to I3 times your R here. What do you have? R3. Um, Good. So we can take it that. We can take it that your V here is said to be 240 as usual, which is equal to your I3 we're looking for, and um, times your resistance is said to be 10. So times 10. And we have it to be divided by 10, divided by 10. This we cancel this, this we cancel this. Our high TV is therefore 24 ampere. It's therefore 24 ampere. So here we are we have been able to calculate the current across each, across each of the resistor. Now they said we should calculate the total current. I now told you that the current across each of these resistor, by the time you add it together, you get the current you have here. So we can say that our high is equal to I1 plus I2 plus your I3. So what's your I1? I1 is said to be 80. I2 is said to be um, 48. And our I3 is said to be um, 24. And by the time you add all of this together, what do you get? You simply add it to be, this is um, 152 ampere. That should give us 152 ampere, right? Another way you can get this, Another way you can get this is that since you know that the current here is I, the potential difference here is 240, right? And you've been able to sum all this, um, you've been able to find the equivalent resistance of all these resistors to be what? To be uh, 1.58. So it means that all of this, by the time you find their resistance value, is 1.58. You can as well use Ohm's law directly that this, this, and this will give you your current. So we can take it that on the contrary, you can say V equals I R. What's your V? V is said to be 240 here. So it has to be 240 equals I times what's your um, overall resistance now? Overall resistance is 1.58. So we have 1.58. Divide by 1.58. Divide by 1.58. This we cancel this. And we have that our high is equal to 240 divided by 1.58. And that will give you 151.9. And that is our possibility. 152 ampere. That's to show that it is this 152 ampere that was divided into um, each of these um, resistors, each of these resistors as current flows through them. Now, the last question we have to calculate the potential difference across the resistor. Now, in this aspect, now, many students will have to fill this question because they will be looking forward to calculate. You don't need to calculate anything. We've said earlier that the potential difference produced by the source voltage 
is the same thing as potential difference across each of the resistors. Then we definitely say that for the last question, um, your potential difference V is equal to 240 volts. That's the answer to that. You don't need to calculate anything. It's 240 volts. Now, I believe that you're able to understand very well calculation dealing with the arrangement of resistors in series and in parallel when connected to um, a source voltage in an electric circuit. And I believe that this video has been really so helpful in that aspect. And also, click on the like button and also comment on the comment section. Thank you for staying to the end of this video. See you next time.